so we're happy to have you back. Thank okay. You. Well, thanks, Dave. And thanks, everybody, for coming. So uh, today I'm talking about uh, my recent work about how to sync uh, NCPR markers. And uh, before that, I want to uh, say something about how what is the NPCR markers. So in phylogenetic studies, we use a piece of DNA we call markers. So, so depending on the location of this piece of our DNA, we, we, we have three titles of nuclear markers. If the piece of DNA is within an exon, so we call it nuclear protein coding loci. So that is called MPCR markers. And if this is uh, within, across an intron, and your primer are within the two exons, this is called EPICM markers. So if the, 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 the DNA is just located within a non-coding region, so it's called ANN, Anonymous Nuclear <coughs> Markers. So these three types of uh, DNA markers has different evolutionary rates, so you can use them to different questions. So our interest now is just focusing on the MPCR markers, because you know, I, I like to resolve some deep phylogeny things. You know. so, Today I'm going to talk, just talk about the NPCR markers. So, why do we need more markers for phylogenetics? So the the, the problem is very simple. <coughs> the question is very simple. It's because the gene tree and the species tree issues. That means gene trees sometimes didn't equal to the species trees. Yeah. Why this happens? Because sometimes the gene trees they didn't match the species tree because in for like a random error, you didn't have enough sequence, so it's too short. Then your, your, your gene trees is different from species trees. That's easy, so you, you just pick longer sequence and, and resolve the problem. But in many cases, there's some systematic errors happens, such like uh, horizontal gene transfer that in bacterial is happens very often. And uh, in some incomplete lineage sorting, it's very common in, in amphibian you know, markers. And there's even convergent evolution. So think about a gene that doing the same job in different animals, like uh, echoing, how do you say that? Echoing the, the dolphin and bat, you know, <laughs> the gene. They use the, the, the presting at, at the same function, you know, to, to have the echoing response. Then, the, pro, uh, the presting gene in the bat and the dolphin, they, they group together. That is convergent evolution. So, so the gene trees and the <coughs> species trees are that different in many cases. So how we solve this problem when we use a piece of DNA to, to infer a, a species tree? Then an uh, efficient way to, do, to resolve this problem is that we analyze many, many independent nuclear loci. Can we see what's the final answer is this? So that is phylogenomic analysis. Yeah, so you, you use many, many these kind of <coughs> markers. So, but for amphibian and reptiles, only limited MPCL markers are available. So if you, you are doing the, the phylogenetic things about the amphibian reptile, you will have the problem hardly to find any suitable you know, MPCR markers. There, there are only very few in universal markers can use, you know, like a red one. Yeah. Many people use it very often. Yeah. So, but to resolve some difficult nodes, we, we do need many, many nuclear markers. So for, for this, my favorite group, what can we do? Yeah. So, <coughs> One strategy, you can try available MPCL markers of other animal groups, like uh, mammals, they, they has large number of the MPCL markers already available. You know? And birds also, and materials also. So you may try these markers in amphibian and reptiles, but normally it's failed, yeah, because you know, the group specific, the specific markers might fail because you know the, the primers, primer problem. Then you you need to redesign the primer sometimes, and uh, optimize the PCR condition. It's very time-consuming. 
I think many people here doing nuclear things in amphibian raptors, they always got you know smear bands or weak bands or not no bands, you know. Yeah. So we, we, we really need some spe specific markers just for amphibian and raptors. Yeah, that's our goal. So so we need we need a strategy to look for MPCL markers for different animal groups. Do we have a, this strategy? If we have, we can design many, many markers for specific, specific animal group. That, that, is, that is our goal. Yeah. So actually, you have three, uh, two types of uh, strategy. You can use the wet method, and you can use the dry method. The wet method, uh, I think, I think that some 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 students here are doing the same job already. They, they use they construct a cDNA library, you know, or sequence a lot of the ETS EST sequence. They use this coding sequence and the search for useful regions. You know, it's quite high con consuming process too. Yeah, but the the the, the good things for this. You don't need the genome data of that animals, so it's, it's also it's cheaper, so it's affordable. But you can also try another no money way, money free method. That is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dry methods. So you just analyze some data, uh, genome data in the database, and you can get the the the, the, the new uh, nuclear markers. So we are. We are going to use this way because it's money free. Yeah, I don't have much money. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about uh, two previous uh, strategy of how to use the genome data to search MPCL markers. Yeah, so that two type uh, typical paper. One is uh, from BNC Evolution Biology 2007. It's Lee's Lee's group, and the one is a 2008 MPE paper. Uh, Tausend, I think most of you know him, yeah. And the, and this this strategy is quite simple. The least strategy, they just compare, because their focus is tedious, so they compare fugu and the zebrafish genome. So <coughs> using blast, it's very easy. Every, anybody can do that. You, you just pick the the axon sequence from zebrafish, and then you use this as input, blast the, the Fugu genome. Then you get lots of the alignments. Then you just analyze these alignments and then you find the axon that meet, uh, meet your needs. Yeah? So they, they use this strategy to look for the to, to look for the nuclear markers at their success. But the problem is that they use just two genomes. So so the marker they find sometimes fail in other tidal fish, you know. So it's, it's, easy, it's a risk just using two genomes to compare, to, to, to locate the, the, the conserved exon. Yeah. So in another paper, Paulson, they, they, they realized this problem. They also use this kind of strategy. They used uh, human Human, uh, human exon sequence, they, they blast the Fugu genome and they got tons of this exon, conserved exon. But they add an additional step because they didn't know whether this exon are continuous intron in chicken. Yeah, because if there's an intron within this exon in chicken, then you, when, when you Design a primer, you will get the you know variable lens. Sometimes totally fail. So they need a additional step to use those sequence to blast chicken genome again to check whether there's an intron within this exon in chicken's genome. Yeah. So the whole process is you know very complicated and uh, sometimes time consuming. Yeah. If you are not expert of using computer, 
yeah, it's difficult. So actually, you think you will think, why do we just align lots of these animals genome together, and uh, we 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 got answers. That's that's easier. Why are these people just doing the, you know, the two <coughs> genome comparison things, you know? So they they just doing the compare two <coughs> genome by blast. Yeah. So the data processing is complicated, and the PCR rate is low because you just <coughs> use two or three genomes. You know, then if you have the experience of design primer, you will see the alignment. If you have add more species, you know, and then you, you will have the high chance to locate the most conserved region, then you can design primer. Yeah? If you just got two species, lots of things are conserved. Yeah? But some conserved area is not conserved in, in the animal group you, you are going to do. You know? yeah. So to resolve this problem, the, very, very straightforward things is ju you just align lots of the animal genome together, then a a anything will resolve. But because the tremendous computational loads of aligning this complete genome together, so not everybody can do that, especially when you just have your just desktop computer yeah, or laptop. So not everybody can do that. So I, I can't do that either. So do we have a, a clever way to do that? So that is our thinking. So in, in a very, very special cases, I use a UCSC genome browser to help me to locate the, some genes in the genome, you know? And uh, I noticed that there's a track, conservation track, here, they have lots of the species, and this is like an alignment. I was thinking, whether there's an alignment behind, you know, behind the, the UC browser, UCSC browser. So, I'm trying to find whether they have already aligned the genome together, and they have the file, can download from the, 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 the website. They found it. They, they did. They give the pre-made pre, pre multiple genome alignments already. So that's, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the genome people knows. <laughs> yeah, but not us. Yeah. Yeah. So, ah, it's very exciting, you know. So, all, all problems resolved. We, we just double that and analysis. That's all. Yeah, we, we don't need the so complicated process, you know. Yeah. So that's the idea. Yeah, that is when I was postdoc here, and I talked about to Dewey a little bit, and uh, he felt very interested, and I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, this is a UC Genome Browser, the home page. Actually, there's a download here. See? Download. So you just click download, it will lead to you. Oh, to a like this menu, so you you have tons of the multiple genome al alignment with different species combination. You know, sometimes with frog, human, sometimes frog, lizard, chicken, lots of combination. So you just choose one of the genome alignment you, you want, and then do the analysis. But what is the format of this? You know, multiple genome alignment. In your mind, you think multiple genome alignment. They they they, they align the, the whole genome together. So when I first first think about this, I think this alignment is like a continuous things. You know, wow, very 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 long. You know, so that's very difficult analysis because the files are huge. But when I open the file, wow, clear, simple. It's not a continuous alignment, you know. It's an alignment of many, many, many sub-alignment together. It's just sub-alignment, not continuous alignment. So every <coughs> sub-alignment has a different species number, you know. Because this, this part, only these two species has a sequence. Others don't. So there's just two species here. 
but some part there are many. Yeah, and the length of each star alignment is different because because the, the, the DNA conservation, you know, some regions are very long, you know, some regions are very short. So that's a uh, millions of these sub alignment within a multiple genome alignment file. So it's called NAF file. So it, it's easy, you just check the website, they, 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 they tell you everything. Yeah. And uh, what is the advantage of this NAF file? Yeah, it's contained many, many independent alignments, like I said, yeah, sub alignment. It's not a continuous one. And uh, it's continuous updated. So every two months or one month, they update the alignment. Yeah, so they, sometimes they, they got a different species combination. Sometimes they, because the genome is updated, they update too. Yeah, so it's continue updated and different species combination. That meets your needs. Because if you are focusing on some species, uh, some, some group, <coughs> you can choose that combination, you know? <coughs> like, I, I just want to do some mammal things. Then I just <coughs> choose the NF file contain platypus to humans, you know? Not chicken, yeah? But if you're focusing on tetrapro, maybe you, you, you want to add xenopus frog. So that, that's easy because they, 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 they provide many, many these kind of NF file. Understand? You're so serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just worried about my language. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. Yeah. So, so you can just analysis the MF data and the search for MPC or markers. Yeah. So, Okay, so this is the NAF file, a piece of them, see? So this is the sub-alignment, one. This is two, three, four. So what is our criteria to, 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 to search, to which sub-alignment I should use? So actually, I, I got a very simple thinking, you know? So like this part, this is two, two few species, you know, just two. Like thousand and leaves. I don't like that. So that's <laughs> discard. Yeah. So too few species is a criteria to, to select the, the, the sub alignments. And uh, this is too short. Too short. You have no place to design primaries. What use? Discard. Yeah. And this is too diverse. <clears throat> yeah. Because you can see you have many many gaps here. And uh, the you know the pairwise difference between the, the the sequence are very huge. So, so this is, maybe this is a non-coding region. So this part, normally they are non-coding regions and you discard them also. I don't know. And only this type, they are very long and they have many, many species and they are conserved, like the, sometimes rather conserved from the first glance and then you keep this alignment for your further analysis. <coughs> so it's very straightforward thinking, you know, how to select the alignment. So criteria is more species, enough length, yeah, and suitable divergence. Okay? And uh, we design a, a bioinformatics pipeline and we, 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 we wrote a Python script for that. And uh, here is an example. Like uh, I, I have the five species and a file, it contains five species. Human, mouse, frog, the chicken, and the zebrafish. So you see the, 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 the courage <laughs> is like uh, from fish to, to human. So actually if you can find a sub island very conserved within this five species, like, uh, so you, you find a, a marker can work across from <coughs> fish to human. Yeah. So, so this is the, the workflow. <laughs> so first you download the, the, the MF file from UCSC, like this five, five species of uh, MF file. And uh, you, you know, you, you just write a program to select according to the criteria I just mentioned. See, lens. So here, we said the length is over 800 
BP. So it's, it's quite long, you know. So you got a chance to find a conserved region and design primers. So the final target is no less than 500. No. So, but but you, 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 you have tons of the, uh, I mean, they are huge, huge, huge long. You know? And uh, the number of species, because here is five species, so I got a very strict criteria. I, I only need five species. So any sub with four or three species, discard. So actually, if you lose a little bit here, you got <coughs> expanding candidates. Yeah, and the gaps. Gaps is just, you know, discard most fast revolving regions, you know. So it, uh, 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 the, the, the value here, I, 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 I force the selection to have the percentage gap over 2% discuss. Uh, that is arbitrary values. You can, you can change. Yeah, so it's easy. And uh, the final thing is the similarity range. That is, you compare two of them, or compare two of them. You, 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 you generate a distant matrix, and then you select the minimum and the maximum. So that is the mean divergence between these alignments. So I, I set a, a range for that. It's over 60% and below 90%. That is also art, art, artificial things, you know. You can change that. Uh, but using these control parameters, you can select a different evolutionary rate of the MPCL markers. Yeah. So just for after this step, you got a lot of the sub-alignment candidate. And uh, what I do here, I add uh, extra steps to screen those <coughs> alignments. One is because these five species, you know, their tree are rather clear. You know, fish, frog, chicken, and uh, human mouse. Yeah, it's rather clear. So I just worry about that sometimes the the program align the genome, they, they make it wrong, made a mistake. So they, they align ocelot genes with parallel genes together. Sometimes the similarity is, is close, you know, they made a mistake. So I think th th this five species relationship is quite clear. So if you build the NG trees for those sub, sub alignments and you see a uh, difference topology yeah more than what I said fish frog chicken and human chicken yeah mm -hmm. uh, human mouse yeah then you, you you might guess this is contained parallel sequence within the you know the alignments and then you discard them actually this is not necessary it's just for 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 sure you know you just <coughs> make sure you got right alignments and uh, also, I got another, another step that, bes yeah, beside this, and uh, you know, some genes as large number of uh, the gene family member, you know, some some family member are very huge, you know, a GPR like a G protein couple protein. I understand? Yeah, they they have, they has a. Uh, hundreds of members of within a gene family. So, so if you choose this kind of uh, protein genes as markers, you got a chance to amplify pair of genes because they're, 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 they're very close, you know. Mm -hmm. So you want to select genes that has very few gene family members that are close to them. So if you choose like REC1, REC2, only two members. So this is good candidates. But if we, you, you, you met a gene family with thousands or hundreds of the, these members, you maybe it's a good idea to, to, to discard them because you never know. Maybe you, you amplify a pair of sequence. So that's why I added another steps. I checked the, 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 the sub-alignment. Uh, first, I, I blast them to the human genome, and I know what is this gene ends. And I, I judge them 
according to their gene family member, if their family members all five are discarded. Yeah, because I want to keep single copy genes only. Yeah. So, for, so this step, just to this data set, yeah. So you can choose another data set. Also for this data, uh, this data set, and the first step, I got 145, uh, 41 candidates. Then, if you build the NJ trees and you discard 21, and if you check the gene family member, you discuss another. <laughs> so finally, I got not many, but actually, this is this is also good. <laughs> I just make sure that this is very useful one. You know. So the final is 47. Yeah. But, but I'm sure you can get hundreds of them. If you, you, you modify this, you know, the yeah. parameters and choose another different, you know, NF file. Yeah. So this is the whole process. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So I got uh, this idea, and uh, we need fire question to, to, to apply them, to use them. And, uh, so I choose the turtle questions, yeah, because it's easy. I, I didn't need uh, very difficult samples. I can buy the turtle from the market. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I didn't ask MEZ to support me. <laughs> yeah. So, so the turtle question is very long-standing <coughs> question. Yeah. So, most of people, most of our, uh, morphological people, they think turtle is the basal branch of the reptile tree, and the, some person has a very cr crazy thinking that turtle <laughs> is close to lizard. Yeah, <laughs> like a written paper, they use uh, microRNAs. They support yeah. that a turtle is close to lizard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there are also many, many papers they support that turtle is the sister group of archosaur, archosaurs, yeah, like birds and, and, and the crocodile. But some very, very strong evidence support that turtle is close to crocodile only. Yeah, so that's four hypotheses. And many papers argue for that. So we are trying to use this MPCL markers to resolve this problem. So see what happens. So we, we, we had a very broad text sampling, both from full market. Yeah, so it's amphibian. <laughs> yeah, crocodile you can find. Yeah, but, but, but crocodile is difficult because I use a Chinese alligator, it's, it's difficult. So I, I had some you know, researchers help me. And the others, it's easy because you can buy them from the so crocodile is from, can buy from the market, easy. And birds also very easy, yeah. yeah. And others also. So see, the text of sampling is very very, you know, it's, it's, the the span is is large. So, so so if you can use those markers within this species, so you got a marker can work cross tetrapod. At least. So among the 47 MBCL markers we got, we test, we randomly pick 21. And together we commonly use REC1 and the mtDNA 12 to 16S. So this is as a reference because I want to compare the evolutionary rate between the markers. And this is the, you know, how to say that? Our Standard. Yeah, standards. Yeah, put there and we compare to them, <laughs> each one. And so the total number is the 20, 23 nuclear markers. So, and we choose uh, 28 species, and, but some, some species have already has the genome data, so we didn't need to generate new data. So only 60, 16 species we need to generate new data, and especially has the long fish, because the long fish is very important, I think, for every catch all problems, you know. So we really want to generate long fish sequence. <laughs> and uh, this is what I got. And there's 26 uh, G markers, and this is a new, and this is red one, and the anti-DNAs. And uh, you will see, 
and the evolutionary rate of these genes compared to the RAG1 and the mtDNAs is many are higher and many are lower. So it's not biased towards one direction. You know, it's more even. So that is make our happiest. So some of these genes can use to to resolve fast evolving event. Some of them can use for more deep events. You know, so so this is quite a good selections. And uh, and you can see the, the PCR success rate of these genes are also high. Most of them are over ninety percent. So it's easy to amplify it because we are using multiple genome alignment. <coughs> and the final answer is turtles <laughs> are close to archosaurs. And uh, this is the contamination analysis. We combine all the 23 genes together and they use like ML, Mr. Bayes, lots of things, all point to these answers. And where's John? There's maybe too small. You cannot see, but the bootstrap is over 90 to 100 percent, you know. Yeah, and uh, if we use best analysis, that depend not depending on the contamination, just an, an, analyze the, the genes separately, and then combine it, them together, we got the same answers. See, and the posterior is over uh, point ninety point nine five. Yeah. <laughs> so our results strongly show that turtles are sister to archosaurs. So it's the hypothesis three. Yeah. So we had a question. So why different study give different answers? You know, we guess it's because we, we didn't have enough data. We, we just had a guess. Uh, so we do a, a simulation. We use our data sets. We use jackknife method to cut the, the data from our original data set and see what is the minimum length we need to resolve these problems. You know. so, so this is the result. So see, if you want to uh, recover a plate contain, containing a turtle, birds, and crocodile, actually, you only need 4 KB. 4 KB is enough to recover this grouping. You know? So the laser thing is gone, and the, the basal thing is gone. So that's why most of the molecular study before, they, they normally generate the hypothesis 3 and uh, 4. You know? But you still got a chance, if you use very small piece of the DNA, you got a chance to, to support hypothesis 1 or 2. Also, you can get a chance because here the 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 the, the uh, boost stress support is not very high. You know? So if you like like use use two KB sequence, you maybe recover uh, hypothesis one or two. It's, it's 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 possible. So, but but this is just a clay containing turtle, birds, and crocodile. Then we ask how much how much DNA we need to support a bird and a crocodile. Then finally, determine the position of the turtles. Yeah. So if you want to support a bird and a crocodile clay, then you need. So we 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 had a, a 70, 95 percentage as a cutoff, and you need at least thirteen kb to support these groupings. So that is why most of the previous molecular data studies, they, they cannot determine the positions because they don't have so many DNA sequences. Yeah. So the final answer is when data over 4 KBs, you know, the bird crocodile turtles place was strongly supported. Yeah. That is most previous study doing. And uh, if we need to robust resolve the position of the turtles, we need at least 13 to 14 KB data. Yeah. So we have a summary of our study. So based on the multiple genome alignment in UCSC, 
So we develop a bioinformatics method to seek MPCL markers. And the advantage of this method is you no need to align genomes. So the data processing is relatively simple, very simple. And the screening criteria are simple and straightforward. You, you, you change it yourself, and you got different numbers of the candidates. So it's scalable. And because using multiple genomes, so the PCR success rate is higher than the previous studies. And uh, using this 26, 23 markers, we finally, we think we are, we are getting close to the answer that turtle is sister to Arkansas, not to crocodile. So, that's all. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. <laughs> so, any questions, or comments? So, in the microRNA study that that clustered the turtles with the with the lizard, yeah, why do you think that that result appeared? Uh, because they were just not enough uh, nucleotides, or no, I think microRNA is, is highly variable, you know, because in that paper, they use very, you know, some not very conserved micro, microRNA families, you know, mm -hmm. they, they use very variable microRNAs. So, so this kind of character, like a morphological characters, you know, so you, you see a, a characters, you think this is support this hypothesis. It's almost the same. So I, the, quest, the, the problem is, is that they didn't use very, very conserved microRNA families to support the ideas. Yeah, that's why I think. <clears throat> why, why did you reduce your markers from 47 to 21? I just for sure, I, I did not, I will not amplify paradox sequence, but it's not necessary, actually. Yeah, so some reviewers say that, and I, ask, uh, I answer them that I didn't want to make a risk because I will do the exper experimental things, you know. So I, I just, I really want the, the candidates are single copy genes, and that they will not face the paradox and also of problems, you know. Can I actually follow up on that? Yeah, yeah. Because I thought, I'm wondering if you're answering the question that he asked, actually. I mean, did you actually consider sequencing all 47 that you settled on? Or did you just sequence 21 because you had the resources to sequence 21 out of the... Because you went through your winnowing process, mm -hmm. and you identified the ones you thought were very unlikely to have paralogs, but right. you didn't sequence all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't see, no. And, but the question was why? Uh, that's because money. We just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not the paralog issue. That would only apply to the other ones. Yeah, that you had yeah. And I, I think we didn't need that, that much markers for, for the turtle's question, you know. But you were guessing that. I mean, yeah, we are... We, Actually, it this, worked out, the, 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 the 21 number is not our first thinking, you know. Right. We, we just right. sequence, sequence, and finally we think that the, the, the answer is stable, and we stop. Yeah. Uh, is, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you, you said your best answer, the best tree is when turtles are the sister group of archosaurs. Yeah. Suppose you place turtles you just say, I, I'm going to assume that turtles are the sister group of lizards, and you analyze those same data. Again, is that answer, is it much less supported than oh, your you first mean, answer? You, mean you, you, you want me to do a topolo topological yes, test exactly. like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we didn't do that, but we, we, we see all the bootstrap trees, we never saw a one, even a one to uh, support that. That ever support yeah, that. Okay. Hypothesis. So we, we didn't do yeah. that since. Can I, I'll follow that. Yeah, I want to follow that one up too. So when you showed us the, the table, some of them did support hypothesis one. So you're saying that yeah, the yeah. trees supported hypothesis one, but not with strong support? Yeah. Okay. So, so some of this also support hypotheses. Oh, there's only one of them. Yeah, yeah four. No, but certainly. never a, yeah. <laughs> never one or two. Yeah. Well, you're, you're one. Oh, oh, only one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it is a very small one. <laughs> <laughs>
So that's why uh, we, we do the simulation. If your sequence is too short, you got a chance to 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 to, to get a hypothesis one or two. Yeah. I I I got a paper that they use Palm C. They support the hypothesis one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you think that's because well, it's a random error, you know? right? Because it is because Palm C evolves rapidly too, right? It's Maybe like different lineage sorting too. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to say, but you need to use more markers. Yeah, then the answer is clear. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I had a question about the substitution rates that you found for your genes. Mm -hmm. So you included a step that investigated pairwise differences between the five alignment mm -hmm. genomes, and then you used the threshold to sort them. What was your threshold that you used? Okay. Well, so, so when you sorted yeah. the, the genes that you're going to use, what threshold did you use? What was the threshold level? Threshold level for what? Six was it the 90% similarity it, that, yeah. that you used? Nine. First you said that they, you wanted them to have 2% sequence divergence as part of your sampling scheme, and then there was like a 90% threshold I thought I saw in there? In there here, it is. Here? So, so right. the gap percentage is below 2%. Two. Uh, the, the similarity range. Would be the the similarity 90 per 60 oh, to 90. Big, yeah, because this is five, five species, you know, the most diverged, uh, pair, pairwise divergence is, mm -hmm. must be between zebrafish and the human or mouse, yeah, see? So, I, 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 I force this alignment, they, they, they cannot be low 60%. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you will choose many, many non-coding regions, you know. So, actually, we did not have a criteria to, to, to make sure that <laughs> All these alignments are MPCL, are, are exon, you know, because we use this strict, you know, parameters. So all of these candidates actually are MPCL. So, yeah, that, that, that that's why we, we, we you can you you can decrease these values like uh, to fifty percent. Then maybe you got some alignments they belong to the non-coding regions. Yeah, I don't know. So you're saying that you, you just you, you just have to do that in relation to the questions you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you want to choose fast evolving rate genes, and you just decrease this and decrease this, and move this range here. If you are you're trying to, to, to find some conserved genes, you push this. Yeah, it's, it's quite simple. Do you know what the UCSC genome browser threshold would be for aligning sequences? Because 60% similarity is not very similar. And they clearly have lots and lots and lots of independent chunks of these genomes that they've aligned, not the whole thing? Yeah, actually the, the, the UCSC NAF file, the, 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 the multiple genome alignment, they, they just align those region, aligable region. Right. You know? Yeah. So but that, that threshold 60% is below 60% or do you think that it's higher than that? I think it's below that because you 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 you, you always say uh, saying sort many many alignment they are highly variable you know. So so, so they have so so they just have they've aligned many many things that, that you would think might should not have been aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there are many, many mistakes within the genome alignments. So that's why we set so many criteria here, you know, to, to screen those mistakes out. You know. Especially the parallel and also questions. Yeah. So uh, one of the reviewers are very, very opposed. You know, they, they, they dislike the idea that I use an NJ tree here, you know, because say, how do you know the answers? And I explain because this is simple. If you, you, yeah, <laughs> if you use 10 species, then no, 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 no. Because 10 species, like, uh, you had a lot of memo here, and uh, you didn't know the memo tree for sure, yeah? And uh, it's better not to do that. Yeah, just for this specialty cases, case. Yeah, so we use the NJ tree, yeah. So this is not necessary, it's that. Yeah. Wait, any other questions? 
Thank you very much for stimulating.